Hello everybody, and welcome back to the course. Today, we're going to look at some basics before we start building a simple pipe support. I've already wrapped the standard plant 3D Python functions to make things easier. Now I'll show you how it works, so it's easier to follow when you watch my videos. In Visual Studio Code, let's open the working folder where we'll store our custom scripts. Next, we'll add a file named init.py. This file just tells Python, hey, this folder is a package. Don't worry, we'll leave it empty for now. All right, let's start with our first script file. First, we need to import the standard plant 3D modules. You'll find more details in the PDF book. But to be honest, I just copy them and move on. About the function activate, you can find more info in the PDF book. But honestly, I think it's pretty intuitive. Next, we need to have a group called Dimensions. This is what you see and fill in the catalog editor. When we create a new support, I'll show you exactly how it works. For now, we'll fill it with just some basic stuff, something to get us started. Then, in each script, I add a comment with a text. Test. ACP. Script. This is the command we use in AutoCAD to test if our script is working. The next must-have thing is to create a function using def with the same name as our script. The first parameter must be s, and then we also include the parameters from the dimensions group. Inside the function, we also define the id. I usually just use the name of the script for that. All right, we've done all the necessary setup. Now we can start creating geometry, whatever we want. It's really simple. For example, let's copy the box creation function from the PDF book and try it out. I just copy this line and use it in AutoCAD to test if our script works. To register our new script, we need to load the PNP 3D ADSK adapter and use the command plant register custom scripts. But to avoid doing this manually every time, I made a button for it. I'll leave the command for that button in the video description. Once the script is registered, you'll notice that a Python cache file is created in our working folder. Now the only thing left is to run the test ACP script command and see what we've got. Boom! We have got our box. But you know, I always forget which one is length and which one is height. So I end up opening the PDF again and again to double check when designing custom parts. Plus, I like my boxes sitting flat on the XY plane, but the default function puts the center of mass right at the origin. That was one of the reasons I decided to wrap the standard functions into my own objects. Now, let's create a cylinder. Like before, We'll copy the standard function from the PDF book and give it a try. Alright, time to wrap those standard primitives into our own versions. Let's create a new file named primitives.py for this. First, let's define a class called shapeObject. Inside the init method, we just take an object parameter and save it to self.obj. Simple but important. Okay, so for every primitive shape, 
we'll make a separate class that extends shape object. Here, in the init method, we can name the parameters whatever we like. I will use length for the x direction, width for the y direction, and height for the z direction. So, inside the init method of each primitive class, we'll call the standard functions. This way, we can also create custom primitives. I'll show you that in the next videos. For now, in this video, we'll just see how these wrapped shapes work. See, doc strings are super helpful. They remind you exactly what to put in when you call a function or make a new object.
With this, we finish today's video. In the next one, we'll continue wrapping primitives, create a few custom ones, and also build a simple U-bolt support. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.